Hello, and thank you for joining us for this Ask the Limital webinar with Automotive Manufacturing Solutions. I'm Nick Holt, Editor at AMS. For today's presentation, I'm joined by Development Manager, George Lovato, and Zachary Aberdeen, who is Project Leader for Chassis, both with Ask the Limital's Global R&D section. In this webinar, George and Zachary will be discussing the company's Estim Motion BEV Smart Steel Solutions for Rear Chassis. Now, before we begin, I'd like to invite all of you to send questions for George and Zachary to pick up in the Q&A session that follows the presentation. Just type the questions into the box in the lower right hand side of your screen. Also, if you experience any technical issues during this session, please let us know using the chat box and our team will try and fix them. Now, we hope you'll find this webinar stimulating and informative. And with that, I'll now hand over to George and Zachary to start the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Good morning, good afternoon, depending where you are, and welcome to this webinar. My name is Jean Lovato, and with my colleague Zachary Abedin, we are pleased to present you today our newly S in motion battery electric vehicle, Smart Steel Solution for Rear Chassis. It's in line as a follow-up from former IMS webinar like S in motion battery electric vehicle, battery pack, and chassis solution. As an introduction, I will give you some key points which will help to understand why today's steel is in fact the best solution for automotive, even for electric cars. Because the automotive industry is facing to a fast changing world mainly led by environment and constraint, today there is a need to reduce CO2 emission. This is why electrification is a solution for OEM. But the situation today is not easy and not so clear. There is a competition from newcomers, from new services, which are a bit changing the conventional automotive world. And there are also some uncertainties, such as possible success, success sorry, of battery electric vehicle. We think that it will happen, but the question is when. And we also are facing the current situation linked to COVID-19 that will have some economic consequences on the, in the coming years. We still have an important comment. Please have a look on the graph on the top right of this slide, which is a recent study performed by McKinsey. In average, you can expect $20,000 cost difference between internal combustion engine, ECE, and battery electric vehicle, BEV, which means that today there is a strong need to reduce cost of battery electric vehicle, BEV, and that's why we think that steel is part of the solution thanks to a smart design. Electrification of automotive system presents significant design challenges for OEMs, specifically related to chassis design. Indeed, chassis parts and modules must provide adequate stiffness while resisting cycling, incidental and accidental load cases, which will be described by my colleague Zakaria, with a good level of noise and vibration. Thus, advanced high strength steel are good candidates to good compromise between formability, strength, and fatigue needed for chassis parts, cost effectiveness of the steel solution between 35 up to 45% advantage. See graph on the bottom right that it, will be, that it will be described later in this presentation, and a good performance compared to alternative material based on life cycle assessment analysis. Indeed, regarding sustainability, we know that steel is very well placed. And now I will, be the, I will give the floor to my colleague Zakaria. Thank you, George. From my side too, I hope that you will enjoy this webinar. I am Zakari Abedin, project leader in charge of the promotion of ArcelorMittal steel grades through generic projects, so-called S in motion. So today, as introduced by my colleague George, we are going to present you our steel solutions dedicated to the rear chassis parts for battery electric vehicles. Actually, chassis parts for Automotive have many demands, such as strength, stiffness, and fatigue resistance. All these demands should be fulfilled while keeping the weight as low as possible. And this is why advanced high strength steel combined to a smart design could be a key element to overcome these challenges. In our solutions, we consider it first high strength low 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 steels also ferrite beneath steels which are best in class for mobility suitable for complex shape designs we considered also complex phase steel grades even hot rolled or cold rolled these grades exhibit a good strange flangeability behavior in addition of course of a high level of mechanical properties
to develop these generic solutions, we try to consider as much as possible numerical process that could be considered by an OEM or a tier one. First, kinematic and compliance, then strength, stiffness, and at the end, fatigue. Otherwise, thanks to benchmark studies, we found that there are different architectures in the rear chassis. In this way, we developed a catalog of solutions to cover the main trend in the suspensions layout. We have first an integral link on the left side with a subframe mass of 28.6 kg. The second solution called five links on the right side with a subframe mass of 27.5 kg. Actually, both solutions were developed by considering the same vehicle with a curb weight of 2.5 tons. And of course, both subframes were developed by considering a package in the middle to support an electric motor. Here, we made actually an assumption by considering four attachment points between the electric motor and the subframe. At the end, our solutions are weight competitive. And to see that, let me present you this graph where we can see um, that uh, actually in this slide, we can see the evolution of the subframe mass versus the vehicle curb weight. Here we have red points representing internal combustion engine vehicles, green points representing PHEV vehicles, and blue points representing battery electric vehicles. Otherwise, it is obvious that vehicles are going to be more heavier due to the electrification. And sometimes it could be also the case at the rear subframe level. So today, our solutions are weight competitive, as we can see in this graph, and to see how advanced high strength steel associated with a smart design could help to achieve such results, let's see more deeper our solutions. So, first, I will start with the integral link solution here in the left side. As you can see, we have a portal design to meet packaging constraints due mainly to the electric motor and drive shaft. We have first the front and rear cross beams with a clamshell design. Here, our most promising grade in advanced high strength steel family, which is CP1000SF, is the perfect candidate for this kind of applications. And especially when constraints such as stiffness allow us to introduce low gauges. For instance, here we have 1.4 millimeter for the front beam and 1.7 millimeter for the rear beam. Also, thanks to the high mechanical properties of CP1000SF steel grade, this grade could be a key element to overcome strains and challenges due to the high loads driven mainly by the weight of electric vehicles. Otherwise, parts such as brackets, usually they have to face stiffness constraints. There is a need for high gauges. In our case, we have thicknesses from 1.8 millimeter up to 3.5 millimeter. Here, our CP800SF steel grade is the best material thanks to its high mechanical properties combined to very good stretch flangibility behavior. Now, our second steel subframe solution for five link architecture here in the, the right side. In this case, we found that our CP1000SF steel grade could be also a good option for cross beams. And in case of alternative design, such as tubes, as we can see here in the longitudinal parts, our FB590 steel grade with best in-class formability is very well adapted to this kind of 
design. At the end, our steel grades are compatible for subframes, whatever the architecture and the design. Now, I will let my colleague George present in more detail these steel grades. Many thanks, Zakaria. Following bill of material description of our two architecture made by Zakaria just now, I will now introduce our steel solution. And firstly, our HR440 yield 580T FB, or so-called internally FB590, an old roll ferrite beneath grade, which represents best in class code stamp solution at 600 megapascal tensile strength level, which has been designed of subframe like longitudinal panel and tuburail and tow link. Our HR440 yield 580T FB allows OEMs and tiers to optimize formability and manufacturing of cold stamping part with flanging holes and straight edges. Our HR440 yield 580T FB is available in Europe, North America, South America, as pickle and oil state, as well Europe Extragal Hot Deep Galvanite GI and Zagnelis Protect, so called ZMP. Mechanical properties are minimum yield strength 440 megapascal and minimum tensile strength 580 megapascal in rolling direction with 60% of typical oil expansion. Chemistry is described on table in this slide and sickness feasibility in Europe are for pickle and hold between 1.9 and up to 5.0 millimeter. It's possible to go down 1.8 millimeter, but it is open request. For extragal GI of deep galvanized, this is between 1.8 and 4.0 millimeter. It's possible to go up to 5.0 millimeter, this is open request. And also for Zagnelis Protect, so called ZMB, ZMP, it's between 2.0 and 3.0 millimeter, according to Ferrit Bedin 560 plus ZM specification and open request for. FB, Ferrit Benit, 580 plus a dense specification. Beside our 440 yield 580T FB, here is our cold rolled uh, CR 780Y 980TCP, or so called internally CP 1000SF, which belong to cold rolled complex phase at 1000 megapascal tensile strength level, which has been designed from front and rear cross beam on both subframe architectures. Our cold rolled CR 780Y 980TCP brings good combination between idle strength and formability with good flanging properties as it able to be bent with minimum ratio radius thickness 1.5 and 50% typical oil expansion, meaning good edge behavior or less cut edge sensitivity. Our CR 780Y 980TCP is available in Europe as uncoated, extragal, hot deep galvanized. GI, electro galvanized EG, and as well with our new jet vapor deposition coating, so called jet gal. Minimum tensile strength is 980 megapascal, and minimum yield strength is 780 megapascal guaranteed in rolling direction. Chemistry is described on, on table through this slide, and sickness feasibility is between 0.8 and 2 mm for pickle and old, electro galvanized and GI. And now we'll give the floor to my colleague Zakaria. Okay, so when it comes to the links or control arms, we try to cover the main designs existing today in the market. For the integral link solution, we have first an upper control arm with a single shell design, then an integral link made of two pieces that could be formed in one operation. Also, two link with lightning hole with a single shell design. And finally, the lower control arm that supports the spring, where here we have a clamshell design. For all these links, our steel grade CP800SF is the best material for this kind of application with a good compromise between mechanical properties, fatigue resistance, and whole expansion behavior that could be a good option to support the bushing, helping therefore an additional part and welding. For the five link architecture, we have two upper control arms and two lower control arms and a toe link. Here again, our 
still great CP800SF is well adapted even for a single or a double shell design. Now I will let my colleague George present more in details our CP800SF grade. Thanks again, Zakaria. Mainly designed with these two architecture uh, is our Rotroll complex phase uh, HR 660Y 760TCP, uh, so called internally HR CP 800SF, and also called flange control or stretch, stretch flangeable, which has been designed on the subframe, as said Zakaria, for brackets, uh, rear cross beam, and for links within integral link and five links. I would say upper control arm, lower control arm, uh, integral link and low link. Or our HR 660Y 760TCP is an auto hold single grade with a complex phase microstructure, which has been designed specifically to achieve high mechanical properties and dual expansion. And today, it represents best in class code stampability at 800 tensile strength level. Our HR 660Y 760TCP allow an optimized cold stampability taking account flanging holes and thread edges. Mechanical properties are minimum 660 yield strengths and 760 tensile strengths guaranteed in rolling direction with very good with very good all expansion performance also guaranteed. For example, for pickle and oil, this is between 1.8 and 3.5 unit. We have a minimum 50% of all expansion guarantee. And for higher gauge, above 3.5 up to 4.2 millimeter, this is a minimum of 45%. On which all expansion remain key for press bushes on links, as said the carrier. HR 660 wise. 760 TCP is available as pickle and oil in Europe, North America, South America, as a worldwide basis, and extra gal or deep galvanized and galvanized depending on OEM requirements, as well as Zagnelis Protect, so called ZMP. The thickness dimension feasibility available in Europe for pickle and oil, this is between 1.8 till 4.2 millimeter, and extra gal or deep galvanized from 1.8 till 3.5 millimeter. And for Zagnelis Protect, zinc, aluminium, magnesium, this is also the same thickness range from 1.8 till 3.5 mm. Combination of HR 660Y 760TCP and Zagnelis Protect will represent a great opportunity today for hot rolled advanced strength steel with high endurance lifetime offering extra corrosion resistance. Besides mechanical property, we have also to consider corrosion through coatings, for example. Based on our performed benchmark, there is some OEMs are designing coating stingray for chassis with zinc coating and e coat finish and or uncoated and e coat finish. On the other hand, practice coating strategy is applied like below. Below 2 mm zinc coated and e coat finish and above 2 mm e coat plus e code finish and sometimes works depending on OEM corrosion strategy requirements. Sorry. Anyhow, selected ArcelorMittal advanced strength steel steel grade are available uncoated and coated zinc or zinc aluminium magnesium Zagnelis protect. Moreover, for component without mag seam wells, for instance links and low control arm, where bushes are pressed thanks to flanging ability. Advanced high strength steel auto extra gal, audi galvanize either Zagnelis Protect, for instance, HR 660Y 760TCP could be used especially linked to higher corrosion resistance performance, like uh, as I said, upper control arm and lower control arm. Before numerical design based stress modal fatigue that it will be described by Zakaria, we will speak about formability assessment for components we have designed. Especially the control arm within the integral link, uh, integral link architecture. Autoform simulation software was used to assess formability to no thickening and thinning of sheet metal components in forming operation by the use of blanks, die and punch. Bend radius, notches, corner relief, part depths also verified with ArcelorMittal stamping expert for manufacturing feasibility in addition to an analysis tool. Through this slide, we wanted to show cold stamping numerical feasibility for the lower control arm 
with, a clam, uh, with lower control and clamshell or double shell design within the entire link architecture. We have highlighted thinning, forming limit criteria, as well to be noticed cut edge sensitivity, so called edge criterion, and small redi because forming limit criteria isn't valid. As a synthesis, both cl clamshells or double shell design state an OK formability. I will now give the floor to my colleague Zakaria. Okay, so now let's move to performance validations. So to develop such kind of generic solutions, we considered a set of specifications. First, by taking into account kinematic and compliance to generate the loads and also the hard points, thanks to Adam's software. Then the static stiffness and NVH in order to be fair in the weight optimization process. After that, strains root cases which are directly linked to the materials. We also checked the buckling behavior of the control arms. And finally, the fatigue resistance of the base material as well as the welds. So let's start first by the stiffness. In this case, the targets for the links themselves and their attachment points on the subframe are related to a typical bush stiffness depending on the position of the link, upper or lower side. For the links, having two attachment points, we check the axial stiffness, as you can see here in the example of the toe link, with a performance of 72 kilonewton per millimeter, which is quite interesting. For the control arm, supporting the spring, we check it the spring base stiffness in addition of longitudinal and lateral stiffness. Finally, the subframe also meets all stiffness targets at every control arm connections. I would like also to mention that thanks to gauge and topology optimization, we were able to define an optimal, an optimal gauge for each component and also to introduce several lightning holes, helping to decrease the weight. Now, regarding the LVH, we defined 140 Hertz as target for the subframe and 4000 Hertz as target for the links. The idea is if the target is met, then the components are stiff enough and will have low enough transmissibility of the small wheel forces to the body mountings. Therefore, prior to the full NVH verification at vehicle level, we know that the components are not going to be the major issue in the chain between the wheel and passenger compartments. Now, for the strains loads cases, we have two family of loads. First, roof loads that could appear with a significant frequency. In this table, we have a short list of these situations, such as max bump or max rebound with their associated loads. So actually here, the purpose is that proof loads have to be lower than the yield strengths of each material. Here for each part, steel grades were carefully selected to meet the targets. For example, CP1000SF was selected for cross beams to overcome high stresses. The second family is extreme loads. Here we defined an FE target linked to the plastic strain that have to be lower than 50% of the total elongation of the material. And as you can see, our solutions today meet all relevant strain slot cases, thanks to the high mechanical properties of the CP800SF and CP1000SF. Otherwise, 
We also assessed buckling analysis for the control arms, where unstable collapse of the links under axial loading should not occur at the highest load across all the load cases. Here, the material could play a key role to overcome this challenge, especially in case of high loads due to the electrification of vehicles. For example, we found that for the tow link, our steel grade CP800SF is able to take between 15% up to 20% higher load under buckling compared to FB590 steel grade. Now, the last numerical validation is dedicated to the fatigue. So here, after finite element calculations, we used ENCODE Design Life software to evaluate the fatigue life. An accelerated life procedure was considered in order to represent the vehicle life using lower number of total cycles with higher than average loading. We also defined a generic duty cycle based on several vehicle life situations. For the base material, strain life approach was considered. On the other hand, stress life approach was considered for wells, where the FE representation was set thanks to the Volvo Sim Weld model approach available in ENCODE guidelines. On one hand, the target was set as three times the duty cycle for the base material. And on the other hand, for the wells, the target was set as 10 times the duty cycles. So today, our steel grade, especially FP590, CP800SF, and CP1000SF, provides excellent fatigue properties. At the end, we are able to provide you with the fatigue data for each steel grade, even stress life or strain life data, depending on the approach that you are considering. Now I will let the floor to my colleague George to present the life cycle assessment. Our the topic today, especially regarding environment, is to consider life cycle analysis. For life cycle analysis, we focus on, especially in our recent motion rear chassis for battery electric vehicle, but our objective was to highlight a life cycle assessment study versus a recent technical comparable aluminum solution used on commercial SUV battery electric vehicle today. We have considered main component manufacturing, which includes stamping, bending, tube forming, and cataphoresis for steel, also die casting for aluminum. European average energy mix has been considered for CO2 emission and metal assumption, for instance, steel primary content, 85% from World Steel Association, and aluminum primary content, 89 from data coming from GRIT, International Journal Life Cycle Assess, Light Metal Edge Magazine. Through this complete life cycle assessment achieved thanks to Gabi Nerical Software without the use phase, because the use phase of the car only slightly impacts the gap between the steel and aluminum solution and still save still more than 100, k 100 kg CO2. As a result shown on the graph, we can save up to 85% CO2 equivalent emissions for the production of this rear chassis by taking into account also recycling credits following war steel association. This study demonstrates how the ferrite bennett and complex phase steel such as such as, sorry, HR440 yield 580 TFB, HR660 yield 760 TCP, and CR780 980 TCP, devolved by ArcelorMittal, contribute to the overall performance of battery electric vehicle chassis. This was possible thanks to advanced high strength seal exhibiting high mechanical properties, which helps to reduce component thicknesses. Let's have a look now on cost assessment. All costs are reported relative to functionality equivalent to OEM baseline design for comparison purposes. 
costing was completely using MPRO values, an independent company we have subcontracted, using MPRO values proprietary production cost estimation methodology. You can see hypotheses which were taken, taken into account, for instance, ideal, ideal vertical plant, 200,000 vehicles per year during seven year production. Our cost assessment gives between 35 up to 45% advantage per vehicle in favor of steel design, technically comparable aluminum solution based on commercial SUV battery electric vehicle today. If we speak now on co-engineering or how ArcelorMittal can support the deployment of C-solution at OEM and Tier 1 from the advanced engineering phase to industrialization. ArcelorMittal, through your contact partner, for instance, resident or CTS, is supporting the car manufacturer from the advanced engineering step up up to the start of production, and even after with the quality support, of course. Basically, we can work together in the framework of advanced engineering, which takes place more or less six years prior start of production. And here we can have good opportunity to assess new steel solution design. Here, it will be the perfect time to bring our steel solution, steel, our S in motion steel solution, to be precise, and to be potentially integrated in OEM framework module. Moreover, we can continue to support from three up to five years prior start of production, SOP, and here the vehicle is under engineering stage. Basically, we can, we can further support with the design. We can also support the approval of new material, for sure, and after with the when the design is frozen and at the start of production stage, meaning industrialization start, we can here support with a no assistant in stamping, with our stamping expert, and joining, of course, with our uh, welding expert, via EVI support team. Basically, the S in motion solution can be discussed in the framework of advanced engineering phase. And now my colleague Zachary and myself will conclude. Thank you, George. So as a summary, today we presented you our steel solutions for rechassis for battery electric vehicles. Through these solutions, we try to cover the main train in terms of suspension layouts with a solution called Integral Link here in the left side with a net mass for the subframe 28.6 kg and also an alternative solution with another architecture which is called Five Links solution with a subframe mass of 27.5 kg. Today, our solutions are compatible with SUV vehicles, full battery electric, using an electric motor in the rear side. And as you can see, our solutions are attractive in terms of weight, thanks to best in class ArcelorMittal steel grades. Both solutions were assessed in terms of industrial feasibility and also meet all relevant performances such as stiffness, buckling, and durability. And now to go further with weight saving, I will let my colleague George present you the next generation of hot rolled steel grade. Before entering uh, on this uh, emerging uh, HR uh, 780Y 980T CPSF, our conclusion will be for this study is our in motion rear chassis from ArcelorMittal reveals that advanced high strength steel HSA solutions are the best choice to achieve this revolution in mobility at an affordable cost. Within the S in motion rear chassis project, we have subsequently developed a light steel racer frame. It was described by Zakaria, numerically speaking, and by myself with all material we have selected. With ArcelorMittal most advanced extreme steel while keeping equivalent structural and elastokinematic performance benchmark for uh, SUV premium vehicles. This study demonstrates how the ferrite bennett and complex phase steel such as HR 440Y 780T FB, HR 660Y 760T CP, and cold rolled CR 780Y 980T CP developed by ArcelorMittal contribute to the overall performance of battery electric vehicle module chassis. 
ArcelorMittal is in motion rear chassis for battery electric vehicles leads many opportunities and have a capability to be a future oriented architecture which is applicable for many vehicles. Now let's have a look on our emerging new HR 780Y 980T CPSF grade as it will contribute to go further in weight saving, especially for links. Aiming weight reduction, I would like to, to introduce our next emerging, as I will uh, already told you, it is an autoroll complex phase, HR 780Y 980T CPSF, or so called HR CP 980SF, CPSF stretch frangible. Our HR 780Y 980T CPSF will be autoroll seal grade with a complex phase microstructure, for instance, matrix of tampered matancite plus ferrite and upper benite plus retained austenite island. Microstructure has been designed with, with high level of performances, described below. High fatigue resistance, good formability, all expansion guaranteed for pickle and oil, very good per compromise between elongation and strength flangeability. And mechanical properties are targeted today as a minimum 780 megapascal yield strength and 980 megapascal tensile strength guaranteed in transverse direction with very good oil expansion, which is also guaranteed. For example, 50% as pickle and oil stage for coach between 2.0 and 3.5 millimeter, which remind a key for pressed bushes on links. HR 780Y 980T CPSF stretch fungible plan to be available as pickle and oil in Europe and North America. Dimensional feasibility avail available in Europe for pickle and oil is planned between 2.0 and 4 millimeter. Thank you for your attention. With my colleague Zakaria, we expect that you have enjoyed this webinar dedicated to SC Mountain and Richassis for battery electric vehicles. I would also thank my colleague Ahmed Bellage and Jerome Favreau for their, uh, for their data for product and also life cycle assessment. For more info, visit automotive.arcelormittal.com and or get in touch with our regular ArcelorMittal contact person, a CTS resident or a key account manager. From my side too, I would like to thank you for joining this webinar dedicated to steel solution for rear chassis for battery electric vehicles. And I'm happy to answer your questions. But before that, I am taking the opportunity to invite you to have a look on our automotive website to see there our steel solutions with 3D configurator where you can have more details about our solutions. Indeed, uh, with my colleague Zakaria, uh, based on numerical design material or anything else, uh, we are pleased to uh, answer uh, to your question in the Q&A sessions. Thanks so much. Well, thanks to George and Zachary for a really good presentation there. Um, now we're going to open the floor up to some questions. So we've had a few come in for the guys. Should we start to go through them? Uh, so are you ready for some questions, George, Zachary? Yes, I can hear you, Nick. Ah, good. <laughs> yeah, it's okay for me, uh, Nick, also. Sorry. Okay, that's great. I just thought for a minute there we'd have one of those technical things where I'm asking questions and no one's answering. But here we go, guys. So we've got a few questions for you uh, lined up. We've got about um, 10, 15 minutes to do this. Um, there's a first question here relating to uh, the, uh, you mentioned in the presentation, the edge criterion. Um, and someone's asked if you could explain a little more about that. Mm, 
Understood, uh, Nick. Um, Ed criterion or small ready is very important uh, when we have to deal uh, very extreme steel in uh, in uh, cold stamping uh, because this uh, high material uh, with mechanical properties, uh, we have to be sensitive uh, to all um, cracks with uh, what will happen. But and also, uh, edge criterion is a new criterion, uh, not today normative, but it's uh, something developed at ArcelorMittal. But anyway, um, it's uh, an added criterion that uh, the forming li li limit diagram, sorry, is not able to predict. And uh, we are pleased uh, to share all this data with uh, uh, with every people uh, in this uh, in this webinar. Um, question here um, regarding the, the Gen 3 steels that you've been mentioned. Um, question here is, uh, with the new generation steels, will you see control arms um, as stampings, so without the need for, for welding? Uh, or like a weld, or is the welded clamshell sort of design still necessary with these steels? Um, the clamshell design, you mean on the control arm for the yeah, integrating yeah. solution, I guess. Um, indeed, uh, we have a clamshell design or a double shell design, and uh, to make it uh, full stiff, uh, we have uh, we have the weld. Uh, Zakaria, you have something more? Yeah. Uh, indeed, actually, it depends on the, the loading passing through the attachment points. So sometimes we will need only a single shell design with the, maybe some lightning holes and so on. But sometimes when there is um, higher loads passing through this attachment points, we will need a double shell design or clamshell design to make the parts stiff enough to overcome uh, many challenges. Okay, um, the question um, here regarding sort of the test that you've done regarding edge cracking. Can you just discuss that a little bit further? Um, how we define uh, how we define the criteria? So we uh, by ArcelorMittal R&D uh, we define a special uh, a special test, uh, and uh, through this special test we we got we got a value, and this value is uh, a max limit that we put uh, edge criterion on um, autoform uh, stamping software, and we compare it like we are comparing uh, a maximum stress, uh, like it was uh, explained by uh, Zakaria, uh, when Zakaria put a proof stress uh, uh, to be compared with uh, Von Mises, for example. Uh, but we are, uh, we are pleased also uh, to share it, uh, this value, uh, this criteria with our clients and the people uh, in this webinar. Okay. Um, just a bit going back into the um, question here regarding kind of, kind of uh, your your approach to your uh, working on the architectures. It said, um, could you explain a bit more why there are two design architectures for the rear chassis? Ah, um, I saw your point. Uh, what um, with uh, with Zakaria, we done a benchmark, and we have seen. Uh, uh, and I'm sure Zakaria will have uh, better uh, things to, to add uh, just after me. Um, we have seen that depending on uh, the vehicle, the weight of the vehicle or whatever, the segment of the vehicle, C-segment or even uh, higher segment, there is a, a strategy or there is a culture of design. Uh, sometimes it will be with uh, the eight grand link and sometimes with uh, links or five links. And with Zakaria, we wanted to be able to choose the same material on all these uh, two architecture. Okay, um, a question here, this is kind of like a, an operational problem that sounds like a press shot um, regarding the dyes. Um, are there, is there any advice on the kind of materials or coating the dyes when you uh, cut these materials? Is there anything that, that needs to be upgraded on the dyes on the operations in that respect? Mm, I would say uh, standard, uh, uh, I understood. Uh, I would say standard um, uh, CVD or PVD coating uh, um, for uh, for body white uh, components with the same level of mechanical properties. We can advise. Huh? I, I, mm -hmm. I don't have in mind uh, properly. I, I propose to go deep uh, with the people as a question uh, uh, through mail or through uh, our ArcelorMittal contact. 
Yeah, I mean, I should say to everyone out there that um, we've got a lot of questions in this afternoon, so we won't really get a chance to answer them all. Um, all the questions we pass back on to, to George and Zachary, and they'll be able to follow up in more detail with all of you um, following on from the uh, from the webinar. Um, got more questions here uh, while we've still got a bit of time. Um, you mentioned, you've highlighted a uh, formability criteria in addition to the forming limits diagram. Um, could you explain a bit more about that? Um, forming limit diagram uh, is something well known uh, on uh, on cold stamping or even also uh, hot stamping. It's a uh, very old um, fashion, I would say. There is Marcinac test or Nakazima test. And uh, thanks to this, uh, we are able to, to build um, a curve. And this is why we said uh, forming limit curve in a forming limit diagram. Uh, below, uh, the component numerically is safe and above there is cracks. Uh, to be noticed, all our data uh, is on necking. Necking means the first uh, point or the first time when the material will be damaged. Uh, we know that sometimes uh, on the past uh, the forming limit curve was on, on cracks. That means uh, um, the, the sheet metal was completely cracked. No, it's not the case. The data we shared by Arcelor, Italy. Okay. Uh, question coming here. Um, are material cards available mm -hmm. for LS Diner? Uh, you sure. mean, uh, uh, you mean on uh, LS Diner for crash or fatigue? Uh, we can share it. Zakaria, maybe you are... Uh... Indeed, our um, material cards are compatible with the uh, LS Diner software. Okay. Okay. I see. Okay. Okay. Um, I didn't. I didn't know what that question was was fully about. Um, uh, you detailed some coating strategies um, regarding the chassis components. Could you could you kind of explain that a little bit more of some of the benefits potentially, or some of some of the treatments? Okay, Nick. Um, what we think is the benchmark we have done also with Zakaria and uh, data we we know, uh, depending on uh, strategy from uh, one to one uh, OEM to one another OEM, uh, we are uh, able to deliver material uncoated or uh, with the pre-coated uh, on coal supply, and. Uh, it depends. It depends on what is the, their, their habit, their culture. Uh, what we would like to explain uh, or what we like to show in this SC Notion project that uh, uh, both material selected is in this uh, webinar is able uh, to be chosen on uncoated uh, GI or electro galvanized uh, and Zagnelis Protect uh, and what will bring uh, extra performance. Uh, if I may, I, I would like to, to point out that uh, our experience uh, and what we know, uh, when there is uh, either uh, links uh, with no wells, that means uh, because uh, the mag welding will affect a little bit uh, the coating surface, uh, we can have a complete uh, component uh, coated and will be, will be bring uh, the sufficient Corrosion performance, or with Agnelis Protect, an extra performance corrosion. Okay. Uh, a, a quick question here regarding um, some simulation material. Uh, do you have simulation material proprietary models available for process simulation or structural simulation? Are they made available? Are they available to 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 clients? Or uh, I, I don't know whether that's a, a commercial request or or, a, or an engineering one. Okay, Nick. Um, actually, today we do have uh, several FE models linked to our solutions that we are proposing today for chassis parts for uh, battery electric vehicles. And of course, uh, our FE models could be uh, adapted to, uh, to a specific uh, client re request. So for sure, we are ready to, to, to share with our customers our FE models. Okay. I think we've got time for just probably one more last question here. Um, this one's a bit broader, perhaps. Um, you've, uh, the focus was on, on rear chassis, um, a rear chassis sort of simulations and, and solutions today. But have you planned any sort of solutions for 
the, the front chassis parts and again relating to sort of uh, the electric vehicle kind of architectures that we're seeing now is that have you got sort of anything planned for the for the front structures um it's a uh, um nice nice uh, ni uh nice question um uh, indeed uh, we started uh, with zakaria uh, what we what we decided together and zakaria uh, was a good project leader uh, as he proposed uh, the rear chassis uh, and you have seen in this beginning uh, the benchmark we have done uh, from uh, from suv uh, current suv today and we uh, we we decided internally that it was a good uh, good point to uh, to choose the rear chassis. Um, indeed, uh, through uh, what we what you have heard uh, today, the electrification, so uh, and the past seminar, uh, uh, past webinar, sorry, uh, with the battery electric vehicle, the battery pack, we have now made the rear. Why not the front? Uh, we are thinking about. I, I don't know if we will do, but we are thinking about. So we'll have to look at something in the future with that one then. But it's, not, it's an interesting question. Obviously, it's, a, it's an area that's in that's in development now. The EV structures, the EV architectures are now um, not as simple as they might appear when it comes from an engineering point of view, clearly. Um, that's probably going to be about all we've got time for now on the Q&A. So we'll draw that to a close. As I said before, um, we have had quite a lot of questions this afternoon, which we can't possibly answer all of them. Um, so we will be passing these back on to George and to Zachary and hopefully they can get back to you and give you a bit more time and depth uh, in terms of the explanations. So with that, I'd like to thank George and Zachary for a really interesting and informative um, webinar. These are always a great insight for me uh, to see the new developments that are, that are ongoing with um, electric vehicles, materials, structures. Um, so if uh, you'd, uh, uh, if any of your colleagues want to, who didn't attend today, would like to listen to the, the webinar, it's available on the voice tab on the AMS website, along with all the other webinars that we've recorded. Um, if you want to hear it again, you can go back through it and, and, and listen again. Thanks yeah. very much for joining us today. We Nick, much appreciate Nick, that. Nick, if I may, a last comment. Um, yeah, sure. Have you mentioned uh, all the questions uh, will will come back uh, to us? And uh, I would like to point out again: uh, all questions will be answered through uh, ArcelorMittal contact and uh, managed also by uh, our business development manager uh, for chassis. Um, because uh, from uh, ArcelorMittal uh, there is uh, a strong development in, in chassis and uh, this is uh, a strong point of interest and there is uh, an organization with uh, business chassis development. Okay, thanks for the clarification George, that's great. So um, yeah, the, the Arcelor will be able to follow up um, with the appropriate people uh, on all of the questions. So thanks again to everyone for joining us this afternoon. Really good webinar again, great presentation. And uh, we hope you'll join us again for our next webinar. So with that, I'll sign off and say thanks and goodbye.